the tweet you see in front of you was by Donald Trump, obviously. And he tweeted out that nobody should be allowed to burn the American flag. If they do, there must be consequences, perhaps loss of citizenship or year in jail. Mr. Trump apparently believes that the First Amendment only should be applied when people like him and his white supremacist buddies agree on the subject matter. Now, there's an article that was written why uh, Mr. Trump is wrong. Here's the article in the New York Times. Trump calls for revoking flag burners citizenship. Court rulings forbid it. Well, this whole thing started approximately a week ago when there was a massive, uh, call it flag desecration, where at Hampton uh, College in uh, Massachusetts, I believe three flags were taken down, I guess in the dead of night, I don't know by who, but one of the flags was burned on the premises and the other two were uh, basically just stolen, I believe. The next day, after word got out about what happened, a bunch of citizens came out and demonstrated carrying hundreds of American flags. Okay, I, I got no problem with that. Some people feel one way about the American flag as a symbol. Some people feel a different way. Whichever way you feel, you know, that's pretty much up to you. To be honest with you, I'm ambivalent either way. But apparently, uh, Donald Trump uh, wasn't for it. And he wasn't for it in such a way that he wants to, or is it of the opinion that there should be consequences for the burning or desecration of an American flag? And not just jail time, because he would have said that there should be consequences like a year in jail. He also interjected that the loss of citizenship should be potentially one of the penalties. Now, if you're not aware, the Supreme Court issued a ruling on the burning of American flags. The ruling was five to four that the burning of an American flag is protected under the First Amendment, your right of freedom of speech, freedom of expression. But again, that was five to four. The current court makeup is four to four at this time. Obviously, Mr. Trump is going to appoint the fifth, I'm sorry, the ninth Supreme Court justice, which potentially would be the fifth vote to make the burning of an American flag illegal. That being said, and once done, how much of a stretch is it for Mr. Trump to get his way and potentially make the penalty for the burning of an American flag the loss of your citizenship. It's not that far. Now, I saw a segment on Morning Joe this morning and I'm going to tie that into this. And my focus is going to be on 
what is your point of view now one of the guests who was American born but his parents were born in India and I can I probably should as a matter of fact I will I'm going to attach the video to that right now now as you can see there uh, you got uh, Joe Scarborough um, Mika Brzezinski um, and one is a guest the guy on the left is a guest and the other two are regulars and I apologize uh, their names escape me at the moment but uh, you'll probably see the names as they flash across the screen Why did he mention Colin Kaepernick? Colin Kaepernick has not burned an American flag. Okay, Colin Kaepernick has basically sat down during the playing of the national anthem. So he basically had nothing to do with this particular subject matter of burning the flag. But Joe and a lot of other Republicans love throwing his name in there in order to rile people up. Why did he bring Colin Kaepernick's name into this? Sorry about that. I forgot that I had uh, commented during uh, the, the particular video. Now, I have mentioned point of view. Here's Mika talking about her or a point of view regarding the equation of flag burning and hate crimes. And you could say, you could look at a connection between flag burning and that being the next level of some sort of hate crime. I mean, you certainly don't, you see that with other symbols um, across the country in cases that I, I don't want to take myself into a hole, but it's a bad thing to do. But my question is, how do you equate the burning of a piece of cloth to the actual perpetration of defacing uh, someone's property, um, physically attacking someone, how do you equate th those two things? I, 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 I would never burn a flag. Necessarily a hateful act. It's an act that basically is a representation of your feelings about something. So it's not necessarily hateful. Now, again, that's my point of view. Others may have a different point of view, and I will have to respect them for having their point of view, even though I may not agree with it. Somebody, 
Right, and that's exactly what I said. But, you know, I don't give a damn as far as uh, putting the Democrats on one side or the other. Now, here is a, a specific uh, point of view that uh, I think is indicative of Joe Scarborough and his lack of understanding, affinity, or empathy for a different person's point of view. Now, this was the clip that I originally had wanted. It has an uh, Indian American uh, citizen uh, basically expressing his opinion about what's going on, um, the fear that uh, most non-white uh, citizens uh, are expressing, especially with uh, foreign-born uh, family members. And even uh, black people, to some extent, you know, have the same fears. Now, you'll note that Joe wasn't in this clip at the very beginning, but once he got in there, uh, he uh, pretty much tried to jump down on this guest with uh, both feet. Check this out. Contributor, I'm in Garrett Ardis. Garrett or Jareth? Give it right. Garrett Ardis. Give it Ardis. I got it. Give it Ardis. So this long, and I'm still messing it up. So uh, how was the family? How was the family meeting? How were the holidays? We had family at uh, Thanksgiving in California, so the weather was an improvement. Um, but I have to say, uh, you know, because of genetic laws, my family looks a lot like me. And for people who look like us, it was the first Thanksgiving. My parents have been here since the late 70s. It was the first Thanksgiving I think we celebrated with a measure of fear about the year to come. Mm -hmm. uh, and let me say, uh, his family weren't the only ones based on the results of the past election and the uh, people that are being placed into Donald Trump's cabinet and their views. Um, physical fear, uh, fear about what will happen to people who look like us and people of many other kinds in this country. Um, and you all were talking about the flag burning right. thing earlier today. <clears throat> and that was a two-part issue where there was a flag burning as the crime that he wants to criminalize and the punishment was the stripping of citizenship. And when I think about the fear that I think we were experiencing at Thanksgiving, it's not about the flag burning kind of thing, it's about the stripping of citizenship kind of thing because we now have a president-elect who is actively calling into question the right of people who are already American to remain American. Well, this fear that you felt at Thanksgiving, had you felt it before, like right after September 11th? No. It, it, I felt some fear after September 11th. That fear, and, and we have to actually give praise to George W. Bush, because that fear had zero institutional backing at the highest levels of this society. So the fear I had was the fear you might have of criminals and rogue people, and, and I had that fear. Do your parents feel that fear? Absolutely. My parents, who love this country in the way that only people who actively chose it
you about because uh, that will be the question in terms of, of emboldening certain forces in our society. And I, I think the question is still open. Online, have you seen an increase since this election? I, yes. I, 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 don't, I can't measure the numbers. No, but no, I'll tell you what I mean. It's very nefarious place. I get tons of hatred totally. because I'm a woman. I'll tell you what I think. Sexual is. things that you wouldn't even want to, like every single day. So, I mean, I, I think there's certain things that have been there all different. along. Trump for what you're saying online. Didn't you get that before the election? I did, but I think I'll tell you what's changed, which is I think it matters to have the institutional backing of a president-elect of the United States right. have said a record of things that jibe with what you are saying. I think it makes you less of a basement troll when someone who ran on and flirted with and said some of the same kinds of thoughts won an election. It's a license. It's a Right. Uh, it's a license. And to uh, give credence to that particular comment, I refer you to uh, that uh, white person on the Delta Airlines flight that jumped up and started berating people and asking them who they voted for and making, <coughs> excuse me, the statement that there are some uh, Clinton bitches on the plane. And you notice that uh, neither the stewardess, nor the sky marshal, nor the pilot did anything to sit that guy down and shut him up. Now, the following day, uh, Delta Airlines uh, basically issued an apology, but something should have been done at that point in time because this guy basically was berating other passengers, okay? And I don't know about you, but in my opinion, that was wrong. And his ass better have been glad that I wasn't on that plane because unlike a lot of people on that plane, or most, I would have stood up and said, yeah, I'm a Clinton bitch. What are you going to do about it? And then we would have seen either he backed down, which was more than likely the case, more so because of my size than anything else, or uh, he would have sought confrontation, and I would have whooped his ass. License. And so if I'm to parse, as, as I do, as someone who looks at language very closely, so the language in these tweets, it's not that the volume is higher or lower. I have no idea. Yeah. It is that a feeling of fear. It, it's a feeling of fear on my end, but on their end, a feeling of like, I'll, I'll tell you a line that's now included in a lot of these tweets that wasn't before, mm -hmm. which is Trump is president now. So go back to your country. Trump is president now. Okay, if you notice that shadow that walked across uh, the uh, camera, that was Joe Scarborough. So now, here we go with uh, Joe jumping in here. Better than one man and we'll survive this. In other words, is there some hope in there mixed with the fear? What's interesting, I've had this, uh, there, is, there is disagreement, um, subtle disagreement within my family. And I, I think there are some who have that view that these institutions are amazing because they have lived I, I think that's right too, except when, okay, 
in this particular case, you have a Donald Trump Republican, you have a Congress Republican controlled, and you are shortly going to have a Supreme Court that is going to be made conservative again. And over the next several years, it's going to be, go more and more conservative. So yeah, they're right as far as separation of powers, but when the powers all come together in agreement, either on the right side or on the wrong side, there is really no check and balance of right and wrong. Is how do we weigh those risks? And, and I think back to something I learned in college of being Pascal's wager, right? Do you believe in God or do you not? And Pascal's wager was this calculation that it's more rational to believe in God because if you're wrong, all you do is you waste some time. If you're right, you go to heaven. I just think Donald Trump has been somewhat transparent about the things he knows and doesn't know. I just met with two incredible women um, who put together an organization called Suda. And we're talking about because women are feeling the same way in some ways, some of the things that are true. Okay, but what is not there? What do you mean by what is not there? It's already there. It's already coming to the surface. It's just not there as far as being full blown and legislated, but it's already there. He made a bunch of statements and then won an election on the basis of that. So do you protest for, for the fact that he is president? I, I don't think, I think and protest is one instrument among many, and it's not mine. Or, 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 don't lose vigilance. Don't, you, you be vigilant, but you also have to keep your eyes open to see. You know, some people are going to be very concerned, peace. for instance, about the, uh, the tweet this morning, for instance. That's unless they declared a nuclear option where all uh, you need in the Senate is a majority vote. So when he said most of the time, that meant most of the time when regular orders were in place. But the nuclear option changes all of that. And he's absolutely right, and he's going to go into them. Internment was an exception. Who's hysterical right now? And we can, we can have that debate later. No, no, like, who's hysterical right now? See, that's what I like about Joe. You know, he, he wants to try to frame an argument uh, from his point of view. Okay, my point of view is there are a lot of people that are hysterical right now. All you have to do is pick up the papers and look at the uh, hate crimes that are going on at this point in time. Uh, basically, he stated at the beginning of this clip that his people are hysterical, basically, because they're in fear. Hysterics are generated by fear. So my answer to Joe is there are a lot of people that are in fear in this country right now, and they are the people who are hysterical on one side, while you have all of the uh, people who feel empowered, i.e. white supremacists, they're hysterical to a different degree on the other. And all it takes is 
for the hysterics to move into Congress, okay, because Donald Trump is already hysterical, but for the hysterics to move into Congress like it did in 1992 when they uh, signed that crime bill because they were hysterical over the amount of uh, crime that was going into at that time for radical conservatism to rule. call him is a neo-Nazi, Joe. <laughs> you just call him a neo-Nazi with support. Constitution. You read history and you know very well there, are, there have been moments like this where there have been disagreements about the appropriate level of alarm. FDR and FDR. No, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about other countries that went in worse directions. I'm talking about our country. But, but, but the, the, the part of the problem is if we only talk about our country, we're not actually being fully vigilant. Actually, because this is fully vigilant. No. No, actually, you're not being fully vig vigilant because you have to take into account uh, the events around the world, okay? A look at what's going on over in Europe, in France, where the ultra-conservatives look like they're getting ready to take power. Look at what happened in the United K with the Brexit, where the ultra-conservatives won an election. Just look at this past election where Donald Trump, with no governmental governing experience, but sprouted a ton of rhetoric, which, you know, four years ago wouldn't have worked, but this year, for whatever reason, and mostly economic, uh, found roots and sprouted out and came out full blown. So, no, Joe, you do have to pay attention to other countries and what's going on because, for the most part, they have become precursors for what's going on in this country. Because as the uh, editor of The Economist said, our country actually is different. And by the way, there's a reason why dictators have not been able to do in our country over the past 240 years what they've been able to do in other countries. That's because James Madison put together a constitution along with Alexander Okay, yeah, that created a system of checks and balances unless everybody that are responsible for those checks and balances are on the same side, and that's the wrong side, i.e. slavery, i.e. Uh, the restoration of the rights of black people, i.e. being on the wrong side of apartheid in South Africa, we supported the South African government, i.e. going into Vietnam where we had no business going into Vietnam, i.e. going into Iraq uh, with a bullshit, basically a lie about weapons of mass, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that was uh, Libya, going into uh, Libya and Iraq actually, weapons of mass destruction, it was, uh, it was Iraq, i.e. Uh, Libya going in and removing uh, Gaddafi when we had no legal right to do so, i.e. going in to the island of Cuba trying to overthrow uh, a government, even though it was created by a uh, civil war that we didn't uh, agree with, that really had not made any threats against us. 
there are a lot of examples of the checks and balances not the, properly working. Oh, and I've said this to Donald Trump before when he was attacking Paul Ryan. I said on the air, Paul Ryan, he can shut you down and just stop you from passing. Under that system of checks and balances, we were able to do torture. We were able to do mass surveillance. We were able to do internment. We were able to do segregation. We were able to do slavery. So all I'm suggesting to you is that within our tradition of things that have been judged legal, I'm not saying, let, let's just say I'm ruling out things more worrisome than those things. But we can agree those things at different points in our history have been considered legal and constitutional. Internment, et cetera, et cetera, yes. And, and in terms of the case, Karamatz has never actually okay. been overturned. All right, all right. So, the, 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 I understand the case for being calm. But if, no, I'm if, saying being calm. if you are wrong, what we get is something very much more dangerous than if I'm wrong. Okay, and see, Joe shut up because he basically made his point, and now Joe wants to move away from it. Point of view. The point of view that he's putting out, though possibly unlikely, is a valid point of view. Joe is trying to dismiss his point of view as being invalid. Absolutely, unequivocally wrong. That's all I want. That's why I said we stay vigilant. I just personally have, have confidence in the Supreme Court of the United States and Congress and the system of checks and balances in our Constitution that I do think that, that we're not, we don't need to jump out of, out, of, out of, they keep yelling at us to cut this off. But Joe just missed the whole point. He claim, is claiming confidence in the checks and balances, and this gentleman just pointed out where the checks and balances failed. So again, it's with point of view. Joe's point of view is that everything is peachy cream and the uh, system that we're operating under uh, works every damn time. And this gentleman just pointed out several instances where it didn't work. Okay, now in closing, um, I did a video, well, actually two videos ago, regarding the 13th Amendment, 14th Amendment, Emancipation Proclamation, and the fact that there is still legalized slavery in this country. The previous video I did uh, stated uh, that uh, Bannon wants to remove, if possible, black people's right to vote. Okay, and that can only be done uh, legislatively for it to stick, but potentially it could be done by executive order. Now, if you put the right Supreme Court in, up in there, they'll declare it constitutional. And finally, Joe Scarborough stating that uh, he believes in a system of checks and balances, which has been proven to have failed given uh, individual uh, points of pressure i.e. Uh, terrorist attacks, things of that nature that uh, create panic and a frenzy among the electorate and among the elected officials, which then uh, take a knee-jerk reaction and pass legislation that is ultimately harmful to the people.